It's a very special final word tonight uh, with myself, uh, Wes Thompson, and with Shane at Non-League Rights as well. Hello, Shane. How are we doing, Wes? We're doing well. Um, tonight is special because of two things. We're going to do a season review to start with, um, and then we're going to be joined by... <laughs> I can't say it, Shane. I can't know. Oh, I don't want to cry when he's here, but I think I probably will. Uh, we'll be joined by Luke Simpson, who was uh, he was the massive goalie, and uh, now he's not. Now he's just leaving. Yeah. But there you go. Anyway, um, he's on the way in half an hour, I think. So if you're here for the Luke Simpson, <laughs> Simpson interview, just skip half an hour and you'll find him. It'll be fine. It'll be absolutely fine. Right, Shane. Um, here we go, pal. Here we go. So we start off in yeah. July, um, pre-season. We lost four. We won two. <laughs> what, is that great preparation, do you think, for the season? Or? Oh, in, oh, into August as well. Worcester oh, yeah, sorry. Man, yeah. But man, you know, it's 11. But pre-season, I'll take with a pinch of salt, really, ain't we? I yeah, mean, you yeah, do, but you'd rather get a few... You'd rather beat Stanport Swifts, man. Come on now. I think, I think it's at that stage, a lot of it is probably under 23 players, um, trialists, of course. So, really, it's just about getting many thin legs and looking at people. I mean, if we're going to talk about trialists, the two centre half, Nathan Cameron, Geraldo Bejrami, they were both trialists. So, okay. Yeah, trialists number four, pre-season. number five. That's what. Pre- yeah. That's what that's what pre-season is all about, really, and it's just absolutely you know, is. Many things to learn, identifying potential players to bring in, and ultimately, how many times have we seen it where teams have won six out of six in pre-season and have done absolutely nothing during the season? Yeah, I think actually York uh, were the big ones for that, and obviously it, it took until John Askey came in a few months ago to get them into the position where they are now, where they might may, may well just get promotion. Well, not this season. <laughs> Or maybe it is this season, sorry. I got all confused there. Yeah, you're right. Did you see the York fans destroyed their own ground? You see them? I they... saw that. Why? Why would you do that? What is wrong with them? I think it's just that, uh, that element that was seen to creep into everybody yeah. at non-league these days. That's the day trip element, shall we call it. But yeah. it's going to cost them a... A little bit, I think it cost them about 1500 uh, off the capacity for the playoff final on Saturday. So, ultimately, oh, they're wow. being hoisted by the right of card, really. Ah, dickheads. Sorry, but they are. So, there you go. What can I say? Um, so, Shane, let's go straight into the league then. Our first game was away at York. I didn't go to this. It was their brand new stadium, the launch. And look what happened. We won 2-1, Shane. Do you remember this one? Did you go? I went. It was an expensive point, about a five and a half quid, if, I, if memory serves. But uh, yeah, we're all pissing on the on the parade of the new ground, don't we? We did it to Darlington. <laughs> yeah. All the years ago, we did it to York. A deflected Sammy Austin effort late on. It was deflected. It was fortuitous, but you know, a couple of hundred of us beyond the goal, we did not care. But okay. then on to Blythe, we uh, dispatched them with a minimum of fuss, really, against Blythe, and then. Up to Southport, where you know, I remember they were actually down the bottom at that stage, two games mm. in, but that was one of the toughest games of the season on the road with the long throws. And obviously, you look at, the, at what they ended up doing, Southport, they were on the fringe of the playoffs, so yeah, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was a good start, wasn't it? it August, was start, August was excellent. Three, we must have been near the top, if not top, surely. Uh, three wins and a draw in August. I would have thought so. Um, but you look at the crowd, though, Shane. Bly Spartans on a Saturday, less than fifteen hundred. But then you go nine days later. But is that was that was that Bank Holiday? I'm guessing it was Chester on well, Monday. Yeah, Bank, yeah, Bank Holiday Monday. Two thousand one hundred forty-three. Um, yeah, that's not that's not bad. So we're looking at August and we're thinking, do you know what? Yeah, we're, um, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think which games, which, which game I went to when I made my uh, appearance. Oh, and I remember where it was. Um, yeah. So this year, last year, even last year, was I still shielding? Probably. I can't remember, to be honest. Uh, right. So we're going to September. September is not as kind, Shane, at all. No, well, that guy's been away. Again, tough game. Probably fortunate to get out with the points, actually. They looked uh, a handy enough outfit at that time. But, uh, their trials and tribulations for the season 
obviously they they now got relegated. But it's that one on uh, September the 11th where Gay said that was, I think, the first the first glance at that formidable front three that they've got. Maka yep. Langstaff, Bedwin Scott, Adam Campbell. And to be fair, we were probably unlucky not to get something from that game. But uh, they played, they showed us the standard on that on that day, really. You know, they got in behind Keith Lowe at the time, the diving yeah. the balls across the Langstaff and Sedwin Scott. and no surprise to see. I think Maka Langstaff actually won the golden boot. Gay said one went on to win the league with firepower, nine nine goals, worthy winners as well. So and you know what? They'll do well next year up in the national league. I truly do. You reckon? That. Very, very good side. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you very much, Gay said Gat Valley. Also, Saturday eighteenth, that was the start of the FA Cup run. Six hundred and eighty seven. Yep. Uh, I wonder how many of those were Harriers fans, six hundred and eighty seven. Right. There's about four or five hundred. Obviously, some of you watching now that I've got a little bit of a soft spot for Calcer being just around the corner from where I used to work. I used to get down to see him as and when I could. Yep. Cracking setup for anybody who went there. I recall just what a good setup it was. And um, yeah, I don't think we expected, expected at the time that we were going to be doing what we did in the league, but it was ultimately a banana skin avoided. Step four opposition. We've yeah. been dumped out by that before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The brace for the lesser spot in Niall Bell. Oh, the yeah. scenes, really. Where did he go? Uh, Where did he go? Rumours of fallouts and, and everything, but yeah. uh, the conjecture, obviously, he's one of the release. I mean, that week they... after, filed again oh. 2 1. Were you there? The quality, I was there. The quality of Nick Horton. We all know what what Nick Orton can do for Fard and again yep. it's just that little bit of extra firepower quality financial clay yeah it... yeah Dobby got see yeah. full scored as well he's gone back now hasn't he gold Joe yeah he'll um, I think they've got uh, they've got hosts up at uh, the best got well, the Poundland Stadium I should say now for yep. for young Joe so it'll be, uh, be interesting to see the kick some I'm led to believe they play with wing back up at uh, up at Warsaw, so we could well see young Joe getting uh, in in amongst it in the in League Two next season, which would be uh, which would be good. And he's uh, he's coming <laughs> and he's and he's done really well. And yeah, we'll move on to October. That uh, rainy day down in where where I want to get where 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 um, Joe actually picked up that uh, that injury at the time. We thought might have been season of threatening. Obviously, he came back, came back well. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously, with Joe going, the emergence of one of Alex Penny from the uh, oh. from the replay, he had his first professional goal. Did he? That's the call it one. Yep. It was his first professional goal in that uh, replay on the Tuesday night. AMS got a goal. Yeah. We might have got Blake back through that day. And, let's, uh, have a little, let's have a little look, see if you're correct. Yeah. And, uh, AMS, Alex Fremantle, Penny. There we go. We're always going to win that one, though, I think, at home. We're always going to win that one. He got M- yeah. um, AMS in the squad as well, in the side. So, you know, taking it seriously. An, an interesting thing here was the the three-step four sides that played in Calter, first season at the level, finished a very respectable eighth or ninth, I think it was, where I believe lost in the playoff of their step four division. And I know Bedfont were, were up there as well. So, yeah. Although there were two leagues below, we've actually played three very good for the level size, really. Yeah. So it, it, it's a better start to the tournament, I think, when we look back with hindsight now than we uh, perhaps we, we thought at the time. Um, I mentioned for this game, Saturday the 9th of October, I was at this game with Bobby. Remember Bobby when he came on? Bobby and his dad, yeah, Ian. Bobby. Um, yeah. I was at that game and I was like, we're probably going to win this one, guys. And we were just so bad. We were so bad. Oh, my goodness me. Lost 2-0. Didn't even look like being anywhere near it. Who scored for Brackley? No. Do you remember? Oh, we're, we're looking for not going to see I'd have to take a gamble. Of, oh, no, Twerick Yusuf got the second. Curly yes. one in for about 18 yards. Though. Yes. I want to say Liam. Oh, no, Jordan Richards. There Jordan you Richards. go. Well done, Shane. There's a reason you're here, mate. <laughs> There's a reason you're here, buddy. Well, I remember that 12th use of goal. Actually, the, um, 
there's a lot of uh, noise about him in pre-season, so he's one of keeping me eye on. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, again, the crowd a bit more seventeen hundred sixty-four on a Saturday. You know, it's creeping up, Shane. It's creeping up. Uh, we beat Bedford Sports away. Man, they're all away. The first three were away in the FA Cup. Um, Bradford Park Avenue gave them a thumping. Only 1,515 in, though. So it's slightly worrying. We were concerned at the time, but we weren't massive back then, Shane. You know, we hadn't well, really... No, we, obviously, we've got to think the first season back post-COVID. Yeah, true. A little true. bit of COVID anxiety. Habit, new habits are being formed, old habits are being broken in terms of coming to games. But the good thing is, skipping ahead, is that we've got the crowd back and we've added on top and we've maintained it. So yes, exactly. the hope is that we'll, we'll actually look at the 1500 crowd like we are now next season as a low crowd and not an average, as it, I suppose, traditionally has been since we've been down here at National League North level. Mm. Um, if you look at how many goals we scored in October, it's pretty good to be fair. Three, I know it was where, but it's still three, four, um, the FA Cup, nine, 13 goals in October. Not too bad, not too shabby, that, to be fair. You know, I, was work- I, was, um, I was drafting a little something that uh, I'm working on, and uh, at one point between two of the Cup games, which we'll come to, I think our, our aggregate score was something like 16-3. So we've, we've shown throughout the season, we've, we've had plenty of goals in us. Now. So that's the uh, disruption of spending more time, which is a surprise to, yeah. excuse me, a few of us, you know, standout results against, at the time, the struggling side when uh, they dispensed with Tommy Wright not long after that, if I remember right. Let's have a look, see who scored. Penny against Sterling. Mum, uh, Sterling, Austin, yeah. and Fremantle. Fremantle. How many did Fremantle get this season? Yeah, I think he's, uh, again, without looking up, I imagine it'd be up uh, between six and eight. Uh, you now, a decent effort for potentially a, a sub or, you know, back up forward. Yeah. In so, we'll see at the level. So, Spennymore was the start of the winning run. What we won six, seven, eight in a row. That's impressive. We won eight in a row. And this one here, Gloucester City. I was at this game and we were losing one. This is what I said to Russ. What did he say? And he was like, just tell him a few home truths and stuff, you know. Um, but Gloucester City, I remember I went and on the way back, um, my journey on the way back was a bit mental because I got on Talk Sport and also I just drove to McDonald's and it was gone, it was gone half 11 and uh, there was no one there, just me driving around the, <laughs> to the drive through. So that was fun. Uh, but Gloucester, a great game. Sammy Austin's goal, man, that was amazing. Have you seen it in the um, goal of the season? It's just incredible. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's up there. We, we can't go out, get out of November without mentioning two things, really, can we? Grimsby Town. Yes. When that was drawn, we were a little bit deflated. We got essentially you know, top of the na- uh, top three National League at the time. And... Um, Gerardo Bejrami suspended from uh, the Chorley game. We were all a little bit tense. Yeah. In step, Keith Lowe and the birth of Keith. <laughs> Keith. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, a word for the end of the month as well, Hereford away in the FA Trophy. Yeah. Again, tough game. And Jaden White with the winning penalty in front of the Hereford end and giving it some, which was just delightful on us, didn't it? Let's talk to Luke about that. <laughs> Let's talk to Luke. Yeah, yeah, we should ask him about that. That was, uh, they imagine he was getting quite a bit of stick through that shootout. Absolutely. The, uh, of course he did. Of course he did. A, a, a lot of bulk, if you'll uh, pardon the uh, pardon, <coughs> yeah. the, pardon the pun. Pardon the pun. Excellent. Right. Uh, December then, Halifax. That's another ma- Look at that. Look at the crowd. That's when you know it's serious. Uh, oh. And on the Sunday as well, against another high flying. National League team on a Sunday and you know, 4,000 there. Yeah. Hemo's goal. Hemo's goal. Go. Amazing. Another one. Another one for the compilation, but let's not take anything away from A&S's finish either. That was a very steep finish. Yep. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Um, and after 20 minutes, it was never really in doubt, was it? At the time, or obviously no. looking back now, well, that we got through. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, we're going we're gonna to dread, dread it up here. Boston United away 2 1. I was at that game and. 4 1. 
No, the uh, the league game. That oh, that one. Sorry, the league one. Yeah, wasn't that one? That's, uh, yeah, that, that league one. If you remember from the highlights, Ash Hemmings had a speculative effort with uh, young Marcus Joyce misjudged it, loose him. <laughs> the, of course, he, uh, he had the last laugh with his uh, excellent display. Of course he Thursday. did. You know, not, we might get time to talk about if we're quick. Do you know what? Boston United, FA Trophy, I honestly thought it might have been nearly our year for the FA Trophy. I don't know. Well, I just I just I, had a sense about it. I don't, I don't know why I did that. We were playing well. We were playing well at the time, I think. At that time, that we had, remember, we, we were used to be playing at Hereford and Kettering over the festive period. They had COVID oh, issues, which was mm. a couple of weeks there. So we sacrificed the COVID. COVID. But then, well, of course, we come on to our massive game. Reading, five players have been one nil down, two one up. The scenes we've played on this, and we've all played on TV, on YouTube, in our minds. What a day that was! You know, Daddy drink water nowhere. Do you know what? I was at Reading. I I managed to get a ticket because COVID. Someone got COVID and couldn't go, and then Helen called me and said, "Where's you can go if you want? There's a ticket." And I was like, "Okay, fine." She's like 25 quid. I was like, what? 20, what? And I was like, yeah, okay, fine. But, um, oh man, what a day. That's my, that's my what highlight game of the season, to be honest, the Reading one. That was just, that was just, I got on um, 606 after that one. My goodness me, look at me go. Uh, 606. You know, I, I, had a, I had a bit of media around that one as well. And, of course uh, you did, darling. Yeah. Of course you did. Well, West Ham was the big one, TV, BBC Breakfast, we, you know, Talk sport, but, you know, you know, six or six, you know, but we, uh, between us, we covered it. But, you know, uh, not just us, but other fans, uh, uh, the guys off Harry's online, Peter yep. Kitchen, I know, got on. Yeah, he did. Uh, it, was, it was a great time just to, you know, he's fan and sort of us were fortunate enough to dabble in this for the love of it as we do or more professionally or, or some other people do. It was just nice that we were able to shine the light on our little club. For, Absolutely. Uh, it's like David Berry's song, weren't it? We could be heroes just for one day. And Absolutely. For a couple of months, that's what we were. Not just whether a day. Were, whether you were a fan, a staff member, a player, we, you know, we, we lived a dream, really, didn't we? It was a dream. Well, you, there's West Ham. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. Um, Hereford. She's it. That was rearranged, wasn't it? Because of COVID, you were saying that, that, was, that was a re- rearranged. A very, very misty, foggy night. You couldn't see a bloody thing down the other end, and, uh, and we lost. Result, so we lost two nil. Um, okay, York home one three nil. Kettering was that rearranged as well? I think it was. That was that was a rearranged one down. Yeah, wasn't that uh, one? Latimer Park on a not a great pitch, as we said, and uh, that was. That was when their keeper, Reece Davis, picked up a bad injury and uh, had to play with a centre half in goal. Yeah. It was uh, not the best pitch. Kaz Martin picked up a knock on that day, which wasn't great as well, but no. yeah, we, uh, we got there. So, February. February, look, we're just, we're living the dream, aren't we, February? I mean, look at it. We got, um, we got Lemington 1 3 now. We can never beat them at, at their gaff, though. Never. What is that about? I remember, I remember one uh, one time we did it a couple of years ago. Was, uh, we beat them four 0 with a deck week uh, scream, and that was on a Tuesday night back in I think seventeen eighteen, if I, if memory serves. Yeah, that was a that was a chilly night back then. But uh, yeah, sounds good to me. Um, uh, AFC Telford, um, Hereford, another tough, another tough game. We, I, we took. Uh, the better part of 800 to that that was another tough game you know just just as Telford were looking at making their, their changes Paul Carson came and yeah. pulled off the great escape down there and they could be um, if you listen to some of the moves that they might be uh, trying to pull they could be uh, up the proper end of the table which yeah it's, it's always been a fierce game against the Bucks and it's uh, it's a good rivalry so that would be uh, I mean not, not too nice I mean, we don't want them to get too good but you know no, so March for me, end of March or end of Feb, and March with a blip. That was the blip. Well, I was talking about Russ about the blip and stuff. Um, and he said he said you know the injuries, um, the injuries they had and stuff. Um, 
But look, we lost to Farsley, we lost to Gateshead, uh, we lost to Fylde, we lost to, we drew with Spennemore, we lost to Brackley. We always lose to Brackley. Um, we drew with Chorley. I mean, these are ga- these are good games. You, you'd expect to prove a fight against Gateshead and Fylde. And, you know, people were saying, oh, those are the hard games out of the way. But once you come to the end of March, every game is hard, you know. Every game is hard. Everyone's fighting for something. So I think oh. maybe if, if we'd have got more than more than five points in March. I we could have been up there, man. We could have been up there. I think with that, I mean anyone who's at a farce in Chelsea's game, it was just a it was it was a farce for referee performance is the amount of cards that were dished out. It was yeah. for both for both sides. But it, yeah, it, we should have done better against bottom of the league. We didn't perform but see the start of that slump. We knew that Gates had rackly foiled Surely they were going to be hard games, and we came. We didn't turn up at Gates. Let's let's not get it twisted. But that was also when Gates had really started to just to just to pull it into fifth gear yeah. and start to pull away from the pack. But, you know, Absolutely. obviously the, the big injury to Matty Preston didn't help us at all. Oh, no. But we can't at the same time we can't just keep coming back to that injuries happen. It's part and parcel of football. You know. Jake Hibbs of Bradford Park Avenue who broke his leg on the third day of the season. Mm. Uh, Josh Gillis at, um, I think it's Blow Spartan, snapped his ACL on the first day of the season. Everybody has long-term injuries. We've been yeah. unfortunate that we've had three, two for Cliff Moyer, obviously, and then, then Matty Preston. But, Cameron was out uh, for a while as well, wasn't he? Cameron was out for a little bit. It, yeah. it is just one of those things. It, it, that, that's football, ultimately. It is. We started, we started just at just ahead of that third Curzon game, we just still say, oh, that Curzon game might have been. And yeah. we seem to step back into it. But then, you know, a tough draw for, for the horse fall for Bradford and then Alfreton. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of salt into the wound with uh, that one nil win courtesy of Matt Reed. But then straight back at it with a South Force side who were chasing the playoffs at that time. Then again, 6-0, just, man. 6 nil. Who out. scored that night? Can you remember the six goals, Shane? I'm going to test you now. Who scored the six? Oh, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure Morg's got one. Um, I want to say Penny might have got the score sheet as well. Yeah, uh, let's have a look. Uh, Hemmings got there two. We go. Moy- Sterling. Oh, Jim, when the cliff came on, right? Didn't he? This is his first home on. game, and he scored. Yep, header from the corner late, late on. As a brilliant man, absolutely superb man. We, yeah. we were all so pleased him, and then, yeah, of course, what six days later? No, I know. From the highs of the comeback to the lower, his unfortunate injury again. So yeah, that's that's football, unfortunately. Uh, that unfortunately is football, right? So look, Bly Spartan, we got Kettering, Bly Spartan, Geisley. Uh, won that one, 3 0. I was there for that one, actually. Yay. Yeah, we, I was there uh, for. We, we were there for that one. That was a, that was a good day all round. Yeah. Uh, catching with some of our alumni as well. It was a good day all round. Yeah, great day. Uh, Hemo. I celebrate with Hemo, man. Oh, honestly, I've got to find that video, surely. Surely I'll find that video of me celebrating with Hemo. Really? Well, I think I do. That's one for- that's one for later. Obviously, you know, we know how the season ended, and we've got to, we've got to talk about Thursday before Luke comes on. It was it was disappointing. They were they were the better team. Let's not get it. Let's not get that wrong. They were the better team. Yep. The Nathan Cameron got a bash. Luke got a bash contesting the bounce the ball with Scott Duxbury. If you've been on social media, you've seen the injury that Scott Duxbury. Uh, Suffered at the yeah. hand, quite literally, of Luke, who uh, more than it needs to ask him his knockout power, actually. But uh, uh, a fat lip and a couple of busted teeth for Duxbury, and uh, quite a few stitches for our Luke as well. But yeah, uh, Boston on Thursday, on that Thursday night, damn Thursday night, they were the better team coming into it. Femi Serity, the right back, on line for Sheffield United. What a player at right wing back, pace, power, directness. We've all seen the highlights if we've, if we've sat through them. There were, there were arguments that we could have perhaps taken a cynical foul as Therese was bursting forward. 
for the first goal. But there was also a bit of bad luck in there with Luke making a great save. Trying to clear his then ricocheted back in and Danny Elliott is off 30 for the season now after his break against Foyle on, at the weekend. He's not going to miss from eight yards there. We've got yeah. ourselves back into the game, second half. Hemo, the cracking solo strike that I'm sure we've all seen. And we were in the ascendancy. It looked like we were, there was only going to be one winner. It was going to be Harriet. It was almost like a repeat of Reading as the feeling in the ground was that this could be another Reading on the card. But yeah, then, absolutely. Uh, slot, a black balling field, we, we lose it and we commit Harry Carey, I think is what I said to you after the game. We, we played a, instead of playing a channel ball like we've done for so long, we've, we've popped it in field, they pressed, they won the ball back and a, a bit of chaos ensued and the, the scramble didn't quite go our way. The, the look went to Boston, but they played to them. They went up to Mill Farm. Yeah, did a job on foil. Danny Elliott at the double again, and they go to York on Saturday, looking to get, get up to the National League. So ultimately, it, I mean, you can't say, "Oh, that would have been us," because could we have beaten five? Well, we lost to them twice in the in the league, but we've oh, got. Yeah. A, but you know, Boston, if they go, they've had to do it the hard way. They have to get in on the last day of the season. Yeah, they have to come to Agra and do a job on us, which they did. They then have to go to Mill Farm. What five days later? Four days later, and do a job on filed, and they've done that. Yep. So, on a limb, I think this is actually the correct playoff final: York versus Boston. Yeah. Reason being, obviously, while well, they're playing with Boston there, and York City form coming into the playoffs, I think there was like one loss in nine, something like that. So they were the form horse coming into it. So, arguably, you've got the final that perhaps is the most correct, if you will. People actually stumbled, foiled, sort of just through. Surely we were in horrendous form. Yeah. Obviously, we just talked about York and Boston. And um, I think we were stumbling as well. So, you know, the, shame. Team, the two teams who have come in, caught up on the rails, they've made a running and they're going to be fighting it on Saturday. There you go. Shane, listen, he's here now. <laughs> For the last time. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say that, Shane. You know it upsets me. Don't say that. It upsets us all, brother. Is he wearing a cap? Oh, look at his it's pretty it's face. Look what's happened to... Oh, look at his pretty face. How are we, pal? Better than you, How mate. Doing, <laughs> better than you, oh, buddy. It's good, though, isn't it? It's a, lot, it's a lot better than it was, you know. Really? Anyway, we're going to talk <laughs> about that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um... Right, I've got an in- I've I've written an interview for you, Luke. You don't deserve it because you're leaving, but I did it anyway. Okay, my best buddy's leaving. Uh, so Luke Simpson, Mister Safe Hands in between the sticks, sixty nine games for the massive and twenty clean sheets. But there was one thing that got in the way of our love affair, and it goes by the name of the M six. For the final time, let's welcome Luke Simpson to the final word. Luke Simpson, yay! Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> so was it really the M6, Luke? Was it really the M6? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's obviously a few other factors and things, but it was a, it was a big, a big part, a big part of it. Like you know, um, yeah, it was a big part of it. It's a big part. I know you said to me actually, um, Shane, you're not privy to this because me and Luke was chatting because like we're best mates and stuff. But um, Luke said that he didn't want to miss his kids growing up, and I totally understand that. And you'll understand it as well when you look at this. Hold on a second, Luke. I've got something to show you. Shane, are you good at maths? You good at maths, Shane? I can be. <laughs> okay, good. So look Let's at look. this. This is Luke Simpson's journey to Kidderminster Harriers. How many times do you do that a week, Luke? It's not coming up on me. It's not coming up. It's because you're on your phone. All right. Mm. Okay. Anyway, we can see. No, I'm on the laptop. Are you on a laptop? You can't I, see I, it. I don't oh. to see it though. It's it's, uh, it's a long way in it, but it's, it's not coming <laughs> up for me. Right. So <laughs> it's 113 miles from Haywood. Oh, there you go. From Haywood to Kidderminster Harriers Football Club. Now you did that five times a week, right? Well, ten times a week. Yeah. So Shane. 113 times 10. Come on, mate. Figure that out for me. 1,130 miles. That's uh, a lot of miles. 1,130 miles. I mean, who pays the petrol, Luke? That's the question. Me. 
Oh my god. <laughs> to be fair, this year I had obviously Kara, yeah. uh, Lewis Montrose, Devante Redmond, Cliff, Mayo. So we was like the main four that was was sharing the lifts. Um that's the route that I went as well, that Limway. Yeah. And uh it, it didn't take me two hours, eight minutes, like you just said there though. <laughs> It was a bit longer than that. Really? But yeah, we'd share it. So it'd be like uh, through like a normal training week, just a four-day training week without the game. Mm. It'd be like one one drive a week. But obviously, I drive to Lim, meet the lads. We drive to Stoke, meet the lads, Stoke to Kidderminster. Um, so I was getting up for like training. at would be in for like half ten some days. I've been leaving mine at quarter to seven in the morning. 6.45 in the morning and then if we was in a bit earlier I'd be leaving like half past six, half past six. Wow. So it's a bit of a slug. How many home games did we have, Shane, in the end, do you know? I want to figure this out once and for all. Well, 42 game season, 21 plus the way we play uh, Grimsby, Halifax, Reading, West Ham and then obviously the playoff uh, 25, 26, I'd say. Okay, let's just do 25 times 1,130. It's a lot. It's a lot. So you spent, Luke, in the car, <laughs> 28,250 hours. I get it, Luke. Mate, I get it. I, I'm telling you, it was longer than that. As well. <laughs> Some of them Friday journeys back for like four hours. Really? Um, oh, my God. Going down sometimes in the morning, we'd have to go through Wolves, which Cliff loves. He loves the Wolves route. So of course he does. So go through there because of the... Uh, because the M6 around Birmingham. So, it was, yeah, it was long. I love that. Right. Um, I'll, never, I'll never complain about guys, Lee Farsley, Blythe, or any of those away ever again. Let me say that. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. Um, right. Let's... Um, <clears throat> so, the next one, hopefully, uh, Luke, you can... Oh, no. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? No. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Here you are. Here you are. Luke. The highlight video that Harry has put out did not show the incident which left you looking like this. Can you explain yeah. what happened? Um, the ball's coming in the box. It's bounced and it's took a lot of height. So I couldn't go out early and get underneath it and jump vertically because yeah. I'd just get smashed. Obviously, I ended up getting smashed, but I would lose the ball if I did that. Yeah. But... <clears throat> If the ball, if the if the ball is too high, yeah, if you basically if you can make out what I'm doing, you can't come out and jump like that. You have to take like a a di- like a diagonal sort of run into yeah. it, so you follow through. Um, and that's obviously what I did. It was there to be caught, and then out the corner of my eye, I could just see a blue flash flying at me. So <clears throat> I've ended up punching it, punched it, and. His full front of his face is just. Yeah, no, he looks like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that yeah, happened. He was on the bench night, Saturday, though. He was on the bench Saturday, though, so they did a good job. I was just about the, to say that, Shane. Yeah, he was back, back involved, weren't he? Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, I mean, good. Just after, the, uh, just after the Nathan Cameron one where he, he had to get patched up, so we're uh, thinking, oh, Mark, <laughs> how many more are we going to have here? Oh, yeah, yeah, terrible. Just. I wasn't there, Luke, my boy. I wasn't there. So I was just, I was what, I was just literally glued to my phone and I was listening to it on BBC Hair from Worcester and it just sounded horrendous in the end. Yeah. Um, oh, mate, you, you, have you had any sympathy from anyone like your wife? Can't imagine she gave you any sympathy at all. <laughs> no, to be fair, yeah, she, she oh. actually has, yeah. Oh, um, nice. <clears throat> yeah, plenty of sympathy. Um, it's just through the game, I could just see blood like. I could feel it coming down my face and dripping and mm. weren't weren't great. It weren't a great evening, though, was it? In truth. You know, no, we we've we've way. had better days than that. But we're not here to depress anyone, Luke. Yeah, even yeah. though your face is pretty depressing for us right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, listen, we're so we're so glad you came on. Um wow, thirty thirty plus thousand hours in the car. That shows how much love you had for the massive, for the kid of Mr. Harry is massive. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, I love the club. I, I still do. Obviously, um, gonna miss the place. Gonna miss some of the lads, some of the people that I've met around the place, and it's just uh, 
I think I think it was time. I think it was time for both parties. Just uh, it just couldn't work with with either, either sides really. You know, with uh, with obviously the distance plays a big factor in it. I think it just best for both that we uh, obviously parted ways. And also, a man like Cara decides to retire. I mean, that would have ended it for me. I'd have been like, no, can't go on anymore. Life ends now. <laughs> it's yeah, I think that's a tip of bite for me. Uh, I couldn't, couldn't go down there without Cara. No, no way. Man like Cara <laughs> or Mrs. Cara as well. There you go. Yeah, um, so we have 69 games to look back on, actually. Now, um, we just we talked about this. When was that? When was the... There it was. Okay, so um, I want you to cast your mind back to a certain penalty shootout we had um, yeah. against Hereford. Now, was that your first competitive penalty shootout? Um, no, I don't think so. Oh. don't think so, no. It was for... No, it wasn't. It was my second for Kidderminster. Oh, okay. Uh, now, we had a pretty strong side out. Oh, I remember the first, actually. Um, I yeah, was the first in the FA Cup. That's, uh, yeah. I may or may not have been part of a group of Harriers fans who absolutely should not have been there, but we were there as neutral supporters, obviously. <laughs> I remember <that. laughs> if we, um If we understand what I'm saying there. Yeah. You're a thief and you're just disgusting. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, so you do you know what? Elliot Bonds. I don't remember who Elliot Bonds was. He's from back. Cheltenham. Yeah, Certainly that explains you. it all. Um, Very so expensive. we won five three, right? Penalty shoot out. Is that correct? Five three or four three? Um we scored our last uh name missed. Yeah, you Last saved time. the fourth, was it? Was and it then Jaden? Yeah. And then Jaden uh, did the honours in, yeah. uh, in front of the the home end. Come on, look, I was sick, did you get that day? Yeah. On that Tuesday, so there must have been a bit coming at you. Did you get abuse, Luke? And the pony shot? Oh, yeah, out? I got abuse, yeah. <laughs> yeah, got plenty of abuse. <laughs> plenty of abuse. Funny, really, I was. Uh... I was having a laugh last night because obviously, you know, I put it on Twitter and um, the amount of like different clubs that we've played against this season and like the fans were uh, like, oh, come to this place, come to this place. And I'm thinking, you just abuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. You at me at one point and some people were abusing me and shouting ourselves. The thing is though, Luke, to be fair, I'm going to be completely honest with you here and Shane will back me up on this. If you sign for like a Hereford or an Alfreton or a Gloucester or a Telford, as soon as you go in goal for them, you're not our Luke Simpson anymore, my friend. <laughs> and then the abuse will carry on. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll keep it in mind. Then. Yeah, please do. Bit. Please do. Mate, come on. You're, be- you're much better than this league. You're better than that. Get into League Two, mate, if you can. That'd be amazing. <laughs> uh, right, so, uh, Luke, uh, uh, oh, first question. Luke, tell me, please. So we were talking about the best moments you've had in a Harriers shirt. What's the best Harriers game you've ever played in? In terms of my own performance? Or yeah, why not? And your own performance, yeah. You could do both if you like. Tough one, really, because the ones where I've kind of been called into action the most, which has been quite often... This season has probably been when we've not done so well. So I've probably had my best games when yeah. we as a team haven't had a good game. Um, so the ones that spring to mind are like... <clears throat> um, Gloucester away. Boston away. Curzon away. Where I've had to like pull out some saves to yeah. get us a point or three points or whatever. Um, so they're probably my personal best games. I, I feel like this... Um, yeah, I feel like them ones are probably my best. Do you remember games. Reading at home in the FA Cup? Um, because yeah. you made a mistake in the second half, I think, and you gave the yeah. ball away. First half. In, yeah. Was it the first half you made a mistake? Yeah, yeah. And then... 
you more or less recovered that mistake with a great save literally a couple of minutes later. Now, do you remember that, yeah. Luke? Yeah, yeah. So the ball come back um, <clears throat> and I topped it a little bit. It's obviously ended up drilling about 20 yards along the floor, didn't it? <laughs> Straight to their lap. Yeah. And then their lap comes through one on one and say, and then was after that. But it's all right. I think you just wanted a bit of, you know, you know, a bit of a look yeah, at me, look at me, I'm good as well. <laughs> look at me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. I'll take it. A uh, little bit like that. Right. Uh, next question. Oh, your best save, Luke, and why? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. It was... This isn't my best save, but there was a I made a real good save at Hereford away from a corner, corner come in, but they scored from it, they ended up scoring from it, from, it was like a bit of ping pong after, and they yep. sort of back it in, but the, the ball coming in, it was quite low, so I couldn't come, and it's about probably six yards out, bullet header to my right, and I, and I saved it, like a, a good sharp save there, that was, that would have been up there had they not have scored. Um, but I'd say my probably my best save. Ooh, there's been one of my block saves in one v one situations. Um, they're probably the most like uh, to give you more of a buzz. Yeah, because it's a big. Hit. It's either in your face or your stomach or your arm or something like that, and it gives you a big buzz. Probably one of them. Maybe even goes one away. Where it's squared it across and it was like a big block save there. A bit reaction, but a bit block. So yeah, probably probably one of them. I don't think I could I single think one. I remember out. both of those actually. Of course you do, Shane. Uh the 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 is that the one in the trophy, uh, from the the far side from where the away fans were and that's when McLean back healed it in, was it? Yeah, that's right, mate, yeah. And yeah, the yeah uh, the cur- the curves and one was down at the uh, that was the, the second half weren't it the curves and away one remember yeah mate yeah. we was all down the other end like the bloody hell as he saved that and obviously we scrambled out of there late on didn't we yeah 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 we ended up getting one yeah yeah uh, yeah probably one of them as well um Lou you t- you touched on this um a couple of minutes <laughs> back um but what was your best away game. Do you do you like away games? I imagine the abuse you get is pretty horrific. Yeah, no, I, li- I like them. I like it's a, bit, it's a bit weird, but I like going to different stadiums, especially yeah. the good ones. I mean, obviously you go to certain ones and they're um, <laughs> even mud bath or it's like a desert and they're not nice places to go. But to be honest with you, I liked York away this year. Yeah, just because obviously right it's my previous club. Um, Probably got wrong done a little bit there, so I think I hold on one and I made a couple of good saves there. And we, we obviously we, we won. It was the first game of the season, so that was uh, that was probably my favourite one this season. Love that. Thank you so much. Um, now you're not officially. Have you? You're officially not a Kim Harry's player anymore, are you? Uh, no. Okay, so you can now tell us. And be completely brutally honest with us. Who is <laughs> the best player at the club? Oh, can you hear me? Oh no, his internet's so bad. Oh no. Can you hear me, Luke? Can't hear you, buddy. Do you want to log out and log in again, Luke? Maybe. Maybe that might be the best thing to do. Can you hear me? No, Luke can't hear. Oh, no, this is terrible. This is Zoom, my friend. Uh, well, uh, we'll wait for Luke to, uh, Luke to come back. Something we might, act- we might actually uh, get around to asking him as well. One thing that I think we've all noticed, and certainly on the, the away going fans as well, is just how much Luke actually gives it when we score. It's absolutely brilliant. It's just <laughs> win winning win, win around the 18 yard box. It's absolutely brilliant. Even the like his old club, like not with York, he was saying, then he he felt like he owed them something, and 
obviously explain, explains it now, but that is. It, yeah. Luke, can you hear us? Luke, can that's you a no. That's a no. So, signal has gone, boys. No, ha ha. You can't hear us, but you just said no, ha ha. What? Come on. How is your sig? It's your signal, Luke. I think. I think it's your signal. I think it's your signal. So let's just. Uh, oh God, really? Come on, amateur hour or what? Do you want to log out and in again? We'll just slag you off some more. It's fine. <laughs> fine. So, fine. Uh, we've, we've said it a few times on here when we're talking to Mark Cannington as well. Just the, the buying that everybody had the connection that everybody had the community, the fans. And, you know, it's been the sheer passion for, for the club, which isn't something that we've necessarily had over the last few years that we sort of had a group of players while we've had this season and we've yeah. just reconnected every with everything and everybody and you know Lynch arguably epitomised that just as much as anybody else in that side has. and you know when do you reckon it changed Shane when at what point in the season was it this season do you think it just changed so that's an interesting question because before COVID knocked out last season. Yeah. Yeah, we were, we were up around the playoffs and there's a little bit of hope coming back and we just wanted to be able to get back to the ground to actually watch it, didn't we? Yeah. And when it, it was just like a little bit of a snowball effect. Like we were saying in the review earlier, a good start to the season. Then we've got past the second qualifying round for the first time in a while. But then we've got past the third, we've got past the, we got to a televised door for the first time in a few years. And yeah. everything just started to pick up and snowball and just attract people in it's like we were on about with the crowds earlier and it's just it's hard I think it's hard to put a, a finger on it because it's just sort of incremental growth through to the season but arguably yeah. perhaps Halifax yeah I was going to say Halifax you know, that was when there was four, over 4,000 there so it was fine Luke can you hear us Luke Here we Luke. Go. I can hear you now yeah yes he go. can there we go Right, so Luke, my question to you was because you're not Akim Mr. Harry's player now, you have no loyalty to your your fellow um, teammates. Who is the best player at the club? Um, Caleb Richards. Just the most consistent. Yep. You know what you're getting out of him every week. He's quick. He's ridiculously fit. Um. And he's <clears throat> very. He was very important to us this season with his consistency and his levels that he kept reaching every game. Um, I think it's it. Sometimes I know he's not gone undervalued, but sometimes I think it can go undervalued because <clears throat> he plays every week. Yeah. Say if he come out for a few games, I'm not saying anybody else isn't as good or anything, but maybe it's if he come out a few games. People would notice the difference. Absolutely. That sometimes that is what happens, isn't it? Um, yeah. <clears throat> so um I've got a fan question. We had so many fan questions, but all of them were just a bit mental. And I didn't want to put you through that, Luke. Not on our last journey together, mate. No way. <laughs> so um Will Griffin, hello, Will, says. Who's your favourite Premier League goalkeeper at the moment and why? P.S. Thanks for your services to KHFC and good luck for the future. So who's your favourite um, Premier League goalie? Edison. Edison? Edison yeah, I think, yeah. Not yeah, Alisson? No, nah, Edison. Alisson close. Mendy's very good as well. Yeah. Um, I think you've got to be certain type of goalkeeper to take the risk that he takes at the back I and mean, I think people who are uneducated about goalkeeping think that that's the way you've got to be you've got to be you've got to be but I think you've got to be you've got to be certain, a certain type I think there's very few I think people are trying it and failing and costing goals Edison doesn't cost goals doing it Alisson very rarely costs goals doing Um. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I think Edison's the best. Okay. You can't, like I say, you can't have goalkeeper costing you a goal every week 
are one in, one in three, two in three by doing what Edison does and taking the chances that he, chat, he, he takes and he doesn't, yeah. he doesn't uh, don't cost them them, them sort of goals. So, I like it. Did you know Ben Foster used to play for Kidderminster Harriers? Is that right, Shane? Yeah. Yeah, a short loan spell. Yeah, he was. Um, I'll say 04, something like that. Four or five teams, maybe. Oh, yeah. Well, well, yeah, you know, we, we help everyone with their careers, Luke. So you're absolutely fine, mate. The Premier League's <laughs> calling you, to be honest. <laughs> oh, is he broken again? Oh, no, he's, he's still there. No, nah, but... he's back. Um, so, Luke, how good is your agent? Um, very good, yeah. Well, you very hope good, so. Yeah. You hope so, buddy. <laughs> I hope so, yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll find out. But no, he's, he's good, yeah. So, do you rec? Because you're going to Dubai soon on holiday. By the way, Shane, he's not invited us. Ridiculous. Not even going to pay for us to go <laughs> with him. Crazy. Crazy that. Do you reckon you might be able to get a club before you go on holiday? That'd be the ideal situation, wouldn't it? Or would it not? Yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? But I think, um, I think I'd have to wait to see. Lots out there, really. <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't want to rush it. I don't want to rush it and make the wrong, wrong decisions. Um, Absolutely not. End up regretting it. You could be trialist A. <laughs> you could be trialist B. <laughs> you could be trialist C. Be amazing. Oh, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Well, you never know, Luke. You're, 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 doing, a, be, yeah. a, you're doing a great game here. You're playing the greatest game. Shane, I've got one question for um, our friend Luke Simpson. Um, if you've got a question, please ask it. I've only got one left, but it's near yeah, it was, bedtime anyway. Just, you know, just something we were talking about uh, while Luke was talking about his uh, technical issues. One thing that we all latched onto pretty quickly were your celebrations after we scored. Again, especially on some of those away days, York springs to mind, just windmilling around the box. And every time we're, yeah, we're going potty in the, in the stands, we're, and nine times out of ten, somebody will say, check out Luke. Like, <laughs> yes, that's our keeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, I don't know, it just comes natural, doesn't it? I think we want to win and it's oh, like yeah. a big relief when when we score, when the lads score. And then, especially if it's a lad that you're like, you know, you're really close to, obviously close with everyone, but if, if there's a certain lad that you're really close to in the score, then it gives you even more of a buzz. I think obviously when Cliffy yeah. scored, you know yes. when, he, when he scored the goal, that was brilliant. Man. Yeah, I think everyone was out running for the pitch to celebrate. That was that was well done. Well done, you. They got the old uh, got the old steps in. <laughs> got the steps in. Oh, yeah. the <laughs> I got your mask on the way. <laughs> <laughs> you probably did more steps in that run to him than he did all all game all season. To be honest, but there you go. <laughs> uh, um, so, Luke, my last question for you is: If you don't get a club. Because people, uh, uh, Shane, uh, me, spread lies about you um, to other clubs. Would you ever consider doing the thirty thousand hour trip back to Kidderminster for another season? I don't want me anymore now. I don't, think, I don't think I'm wanted anymore. Um, no, it was it, it was it, it was strange how it all how it happened with with towards the end of the season, you know when. I think, uh, I think, yeah, I think it was just for the best in the end for, for both. I have, I have a message from, uh, you know, Jimmy. You know, Jimmy O'Connor. Jim, Jim O'Connor, yeah, yeah. Um, I was chatting to Jimmy actually. You don't know this Shane either. Cause me and Jimmy are best mates as well. I was chatting to Jimmy, um, chatting to Jimmy, and I said that you were coming on and uh, to say a proper goodbye, um, goodbye. Um, and he says Simo. A top, top bloke who I can't speak highly enough of. Not a bad word to say about him. Football, unfortunately. So there you go. That's the assistant manager giving you a nice big... Uh... Yeah, that's lovely. That's lovely. That's lovely. It's, uh, really appreciated. And obviously reciprocated as well back to Jim. So uh, it's been me. It's been, it's been an absolute pleasure, honestly. I can't tell you enough. You know, it's from, from the top, from the gaffer... To people who are working behind the scenes, uh, obviously, yeah. it might go under the radar to some fans. I know it doesn't mean you guys, but it might go under the radar to some fans. The coaching staff, the physio, Mike, you know, Dan, Jim, Gaffer, Evo, 
particularly Evo, he's he's been he's been fantastic. I mean, the amount of phone calls we've had, you know, he's a part-time goalkeeper coach, but the amount of phone calls yeah. we've had and <laughs> putting the um, putting things in motion make me better to make the team better. He's been he's been incredible. Um, but then you've got like you know Matty Paddock working tirelessly, Helen in the offices, brilliant people, all the match day staff, all the people upstairs. Honestly, it's just the club is filled with it. And <clears throat> no, it was a it was a pleasure to be there for two seasons. Absolute pleasure, and I loved walking out after and loved the fans behind shouting. The you know my chant and uh, England's number one after I make yeah. a save even after I make a save I'd, I could hear him screaming uh, England's number one and stuff and that for me obviously I've got my family in the stand they might think they might think it's only quite little but I've got my family in the stand listening to that and my kids listening to that and it honestly it means it means a lot so I miss the place massively. I'm I would. Oh, by the way, Luke, I've noticed you haven't got your final word mug. I don't know what that's about. It's like you've forgotten completely about your favorite Amazing. mug. Sorry, but it is, the mug, but it is my favorite mug. Yeah, by far, it. by none. It's been of course. On any of the mini eggs ones that I got at Easter, any of the Kit Kat ones that I got at Easter, that, that, that's top cherry. And I'll be having my brew of it tonight. Yeah, you will. Um, um, I've got a, a, another question. I was going to say, now, I think this is quite obvious what the answer is going to be, but I'll ask it anywhere because people want to know what's the biggest thing you're going to miss about killing Mr. Harriers? People, I think I think I touched on it in the last time we spoke. Yep. Uh, earlier in the season. Just the people. The people, the people are, like I said, around the club, around the town. Like, he's probably probably one of the only clubs that I've gone to where that the club means everything to the town. You know, it doesn't it's not like everybody supports Birmingham or Villa. Like Kidderminster was everyone's number one club, not number two club where mm. they'll go sometimes. And that's the way I found it anyway. Maybe it's because we had a lot of success this year. Obviously we didn't didn't reach uh, our potential but we had a lot of success and the attendances started to get a lot better from um, from previous years that I've heard about, but um, not just the people, yeah, the people, the people that I worked with, some unbelievable lads, you know, like I say, Gaffer, Jim, Evo, Dan, Mike, um, just great people, good, good people, good hardworking people, salt of the earth people, and that's it's difficult to find in football. So, uh, no, I can't speak highly enough of the place and. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I will miss it, yeah. So, Luke, I won't miss the drive. <laughs> I won't miss 30,000 hours of driving. <laughs> well, Not, no, I'll miss parts of the drive, spending a lot of time with lads and stuff. We had a good laugh. Yeah. I miss all, all that, but the actual hours and naps that I had to have at like two o'clock in the afternoon because I was up early and stuff, I won't miss all that. Do you know what? Life is a funny way of you'll look back on that fondly. I would have thought that M6 journey. You'll look back on it in just in the nicest way. It t- eventually, long way down the road, when you stop counting yeah, no, how much it costs you. I will. I will. <laughs> I'm, I'll, we've, we've still got our car school group chat going, and we uh, went out in Manchester on Saturday, all of us, and over then Cliff. Cliff couldn't make it, and Caleb was doing some uh, Mount Snowden or something. And, uh, yeah, we, we had a great time. We had a great laugh. So, um, <laughs> I if I could win just before you, you finish it up, um, well, just wanted to say, really, you know, I'll, I'll dug out the bookies I've come pre season and they have a stand to finish eighth, so they would eighth, ninth. We finished fourth with you know, you've been part of a team that were seconds away from history. You know, we, we all know what happened there. What, uh, season has been like that and we've said it on the interviews with Cara and some of the other guys for the first time in years we've had a team that we've really been able to connect with and just feel at one with and you know you've been a massive part of that league so just from for me and I'll speak to everybody watching this and we go to the games with thank you for getting so involved with the club and 
sort of adopting it as as your own, really. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, say that, really. No, I mean, the pleasure was mine. I appreciate it. I mean, the pleasure was mine. You know, it was the first club that my son was able to properly watch me at and understand football. It was the club that um, I was at when I had my daughter. My, my daughter was born. So it's been the club will always mean a lot to us as a family. And they've, they've all come down and watched the dad play and come on the pitch after the game and things like that. And always been welcomed by everybody uh, around the club and stuff like that. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome until you sign for Hereford and then that's going to be awkward. <laughs> it's going to be Mate, really I'm awkward. For, I'm not signing for Hereford, relax. <laughs> or oh, Cheltenham. Yeah. The world exclusive. Cheltenham's even worse, to be fair. There you go. Um, Luke, listen, it's an pl- absolute pleasure, but this is your chance now to finish your final word, the last one ever that you'll do with us, um, for the Killing Mr. Harriers fans. So you get your last chance to say... Um, your last goodbyes to the Harriers fans, and then we are, are you done. To back on again, pardon? We're well, not allowed back on now. I'm not, not back on now. Absolutely <laughs> not. That's, that's disappointment. I'll, I'll be in touch, Steve. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do something without Wayne. Well, we got a breakaway <laughs> league now. What's going on here? You know, the that's Euro it. Super League. What's going on? Um, no, Luke, of course you can, but as a Killing Mr. Harriers player. This is your, yeah. this is your former Kim Harry's player. This is your last chance. Don't make it all about you, even though it is all about you. <laughs> so Say what you want, Luke. It's fine. No, uh, I want to thank everybody. Um, you know, um, I think I've only had like two or three. Well, that I've seen two or three negative comments, and people happy that I'm left, which I'm sure, I'm sure a few people are. But um, some of the, some of the. Um, replies on Twitter and things like that and Instagram and what have you. I don't go unnoticed and it really means a lot. So um I thank you thank you very much for having me and um hopefully I uh repaid you a little bit with the faith that the club and the fans have shown in me. Hopefully I repaid that a little bit and uh there's brighter days for everybody coming. The club's going places, gonna get promoted next year. Um I'll kick on and I'll do my, I'll, um, you know, I'll sign wherever I sign at and, uh, and we'll, we'll always look back on this season. I think from both sets, from fans, staff, players, myself, we'll look back on this season fondly and some of the great times, some of the best times of my career. And so, no, it's been brilliant. And uh, like I say, thank you for having me. Well, thank you very much, Luke, for for coming on as a former Kim to Harriers player. That's what you'll do from now on if we see you again, unless you're going to break away with Shane. Shane, thank you again for a brilliant um, a final word. It was a fantastic season thank review as well. well. Um, yeah, so thank you, Luke. Listen, enjoy Dubai. Enjoy, um, enjoy pre-season, wherever you go. Keep eating the Chinese because that's what you all do. Yeah. It's really weird, but you keep doing it. Um, and hey, then, I, yeah, I and keep then... too many clean sheets, mate. I, I have to clean sheet Chinese, and I'm keeping too many clean sheets, so I'm gonna have to keep getting the Chinese out. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> I love that. I love that. No. Absolutely right. Well, <laughs> so Luke Simpson, thank you so much. Peace and love, my friend. Peace and love to you from all Harry's fans everywhere. Um, and good luck on your travels for the rest of the you know, rest of your career, buddy. We'll see you soon. Absolutely. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, Luke. Pleasure. Goodbye, guys. Wish Goodbye. you the best. Bye-bye.